Hi there, logicians. Uh, this is the first lecture on universes, and for this lecture, I'll be going through the lecture notes uh, number 15, titled Universes and Predicate Validity. This is the first of those lectures. All right, so uh, let's start off by thinking about uh, something from sentential logic. Take a formula like this. If P, then if Q, then P. What do we need to know to know whether that formula is true? Well, really just, uh, just two things. You need to know the truth value of P and Q. So once you know if P and Q are true or false, you can work out the truth value of that whole formula. That's sentential. What about predicate? What, is it, what do you have to know to know the truth value of a formula like this? Every x is such that x has property p, or all x's are p. Well, you really need to know two things here. You need to know first uh, what uh, the domain is. You need to know what the domain is so you know how to read the quantifier. Is this everything, every number, every person, every dog, every horse, and so on and so forth. So we need to know what the domain is. Second, we need to know what property px is. Sorry for the bad handwriting. We need to know what property px is. So suppose we know that uh, our domain uh, is dogs and px is the property of being hairy. Then we know that this sentence says all dogs are hairy and we can then evaluate the truth of that sentence. I'm not sure if all dogs are hairy or not, so I don't know if it's true or not. But those are the things that would go in to figuring out whether it's a predicate sentence is true. And we have a technical name for this. We call the domain, the domain, what we've already described as the domain, and we call uh, a description of what the, the predicates refer to as an interpretation. So we have a domain and an interpretation. Once we have a domain and an interpretation, we have enough to figure out whether or not a predicate formula is true or false. And together we call all of this stuff, a domain and an interpretation together, we call a universe. So we say relative to certain universes this formula is true and relative to certain other universes that formula is false. So now let's work through some examples of, of how uh, changing the universe might change the truth value of a predicate formula in a similar way that changing the truth values of P and Q might change the truth value of a sentential formula. So let's just start with uh, the example that's on the slides. So if you're following along here, I'm on uh, slide number uh, four, I think it is. And let's take the formula. There is an x, ax, and bx. So that says something like sum a is b. Now let's first consider a universe like the following. Call this universe one, where the domain are the students at DePauw. And the interpretation is the following. We let ax refer to the property of being a senior. We let bx be the property uh, of being an econ major. X is Oops. And given this, we should now be able to figure out whether or not the formula is true or false. So think about that for a second. Given this domain and this interpretation, is that formula true or false? And if you think about it, you'll see, yeah, this formula is true relative to this universe. Because then, given this universe, it says some students at DePauw are both seniors and economics majors. And that's true. So the formula on this universe ends up being true. Let's consider a different sort of uh, universe, though. And we're going to get this universe. We'll call it universe 2. We'll keep the domain the same as students at DePaul, but we're going to change the interpretation. We're going to let now ax mean x is a freshman, and bx mean x is over 40 years old. Now think about whether this formula is true or false. 
given this universe, universe 2 here. And again, if you think about it, if you think a little bit about the paw, you'll see that this formula is false. That is, this formula relative to universe 2 actually comes out false. Why is that? Well, it says some students at DePauw are both freshmen and over 40 years old, but there aren't any such uh, students at DePauw, and so the formula is false. And so we can see that changing our universe actually changes the truth value of our formula up here. Let's look at one more example that will show how we can uh, change the truth value of our formula by changing our domain or our interpretation, that is by changing our universe. Uh, and this example is going to be just a slightly more complicated, hopefully not too complicated. So here we go. Let's let the formula be, for all x, there is a y, r x y. That's our formula. And let's consider a variety of interpretations uh, and, and domains, so a variety of universes. Let's take our first universe to have the domain be the positive integers. Those are the counting numbers, so 1, 2, 3, on up. And let's have our interpretation of, we only have one thing to interpret here, that is the R relation. Let's let the R relation, uh, in this particular case, uh, refer to the greater than relation. So let's let r x y mean x is greater than y. And let's think about whether or not this is true or false. Well this says there is some positive integer x that's great, sorry, it doesn't say that, it says <laughs> every positive integer is greater than some positive integer. Now you might be tempted to think that's true because you think, well, 2 is greater than 1, and 3 is greater than 2, and no matter which number I pick, I can always find some number that, that, that the number I picked is greater than. But in fact, you'll see that I sort of skipped over a rather important number here that shows us that actually on this universe, this is false. Why is that? Well, we can find a positive integer, something in our domain, that's not greater than even one thing in our domain. That is number 1. Number one here is in our domain, but it's not greater than anything in our domain. It's not greater than itself, and it's not greater than any of the larger numbers. And so on this interpretation, uh, the formula comes out false. But let's see what happens if we leave the interpretation the same, but change our domain now. And all we're going to do is this, change our domain to the negative integers. So that is negative one, negative two, negative three and so on, infinitely into the negative numbers. If you think about this one, you'll see actually this is true now. So by changing the domain and keeping the interpretation the same, we actually were able to change the formula from true, sorry, from false to true. So why is it true in this case? Well this says every member of our domain is greater than some member of our domain. And that's true because negative one is greater than negative 2, and negative 2 is greater than negative 3, and as you go down there's always a lesser number, and so every member of our domain is greater than some member of our domain. And so in universe 2 it's true. Maybe you don't like math so much, so let's go ahead and change to a completely different sort of thing. Let's let our domain, and here we're going to have to use our imaginations because we're not actually in class because it's all virtual now. But let's suppose, just close your eyes, imagine we're sitting in class. And let our domain be the people in our classroom. That's our domain now. And let's let our interpretation be x is taller. Sorry, oops. Our interpretation of rxy is going to be x is taller than y. Now let's think about whether or not this is this formula here now is true or false given this interpretation and domain. So what's it say? It says every person in our classroom 
is taller than some person in our classroom. And if you think about it, you'll see that's actually false. Every person in our classroom is not taller than some person in our classroom because there's got to be a shortest person. And the shortest person is not going to be taller than anyone. They're not taller than themselves, and they're not taller than anybody else. And so on this universe, on this domain and interpretation, we've got a false formula here. Now, last time we saw that we could switch from false to true by changing the domain. This time I want to show you that we can switch from false to true by changing our interpretation. So I'm going to leave our domain the same, but I'm going to switch our interpretation from x is taller than y to x is within 5 feet of y. And again, we're going to have to use our imaginations because we're not actually sitting in class right now. But think about what this says now. It says every person in our classroom is within five feet of some person in our classroom. And if you think about how the classroom's laid out, that's true. For every person, everyone's not, maybe not within five feet of everybody, but everybody's within five feet of somebody. And so on this universe, that is this domain and this interpretation, we've now got a true formula. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you see a little bit right now about how universes, that is domains and interpretations, can dictate the truth value of our predicate formulas. In the next video, we'll try to talk about how this relates to um, uh, some of the properties that we care about, such as validity, um, consistency, and contingency, uh, all things that we've talked about earlier in the class.